In Hyperlinks 9.2, support has been added for DDR4 and LPDDR4 in the DDR wizard. Of course, in the DDR wizard, you can verify memories of all different varieties from DDR up to DDR4 and the low power alternatives using this step-by-step -step wizard to generate very comprehensive simulations to look at the worst case conditions of your memory bus. So setup as we step through allows you to set up your controller and DRAMs and the associated IBIS models assigned to those. We can pick which nets we want to simulate, data, strobes, clocks, address command and control, and also enable some different options uh, like dynamic termination, which gives you three different ODT states, or the data bus inversion, which is uh, one of the items new to DDR4. The DRAM signals get automatically selected using the automatic net mapping. I have a simple line sim schematic here with just four data bits. Uh, so you have, you see I have a, a pretty simple group of uh, data and strobe signals as well as the clock and single address net. And those settings of course can be overridden and you can also uh, select which of those signals you want to actually simulate. Now the ODT models are usually set by the model selectors uh, in the different IBIS models. So here it allows you to set up those three different states of on die termination for each of the controller and, and each of the DRAMs. And then the ODT behavior is set on the next page which allows you to set the behavior of, of what's enabled and disabled for writes to each slot and reads from each slot. You can also set model selectors for the, the non-data strobe signals as well as view and edit timing models and control write leveling. Uh, another item that's new to DDR4 and LPDDR4 is VREF training, which basically allows for a different centering voltage for the, the different signals uh, to account for the, the variation among the different signals and give you maximum margin. You can also set up your stimulus and crosstalk, uh, any sweeps that you might want to run, and different simulation options. Uh, in addition to any JDEC quality checks that you might want to run as well in your simulation. After you set up your reporting options, then you run your simulation. And when your simulation is complete, you get a number of different reporting options, uh, including Excel spreadsheets, actual waveform files that can be viewed in the oscilloscope and aggregated these aggregated reports depending on how you've set up your reporting options in the wizard. So here we can see as we step through the different results goes in the uh, sweeps viewer we can see all the different results on each of our uh, data signals and among those, those results, we can see that we have uh, different eye center values, so uh, different uh, voltage, the different voltage training values. Uh, we can see at uh, when doing reads from slot one, we're getting voltage levels around 800 millivolts. And those actually all seem to be failing, so we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, we can also see doing reads from slot two, we're getting uh, voltage levels around 105 millivolts, yeah, a little over 800 millivolts. And then for the, uh, for the writes to the different slots, we're getting about 975 when writing to slot one, and then writing to slot two, we're getting around 925 millivolts. And these are the different centering voltages that are used to center the eye masks when uh, validating DDR4 signals. Uh, it also will report your setup and hold time margin similar to any other DDRX and, and LPD DDRX variety. 
uh, as well as uh, voltages above and below the, the centering voltage, uh, pulse widths, slew rates, all that data is available here in the sweeps viewer. So if we look at our failures here, we seem to be getting pretty consistent failures uh, reading from uh, slot one. And looking at these waveforms, we kind of see these different distinct voltage levels within the eye, which is a good indication that we have some kind of reflection issue. So let's go back into the wizard there and take a look at the, what settings we have for ODT behavior. And here, when we're doing reads from slot one, it's uh, our ODT is enabled at the controller and disabled at both slots. So that'll be something that we could go into uh, the oscilloscope and actually simulate. So uh, let's go ahead and set up a, a quick simulation in line sim here to see if we can uh, mimic that results. And notice you will get slightly different results for the eye uh, from what's generated in the DDRX wizard because uh, this is using a constant frequency, whereas in the DDRX wizard, we're using the, the strobe, each strobe on each cycle to, to generate the eye. So yeah, here we see that same phenomenon with those, those different voltage levels. And so let's see what we could do to try and resolve that. So uh, if we go back into the, the DDRX wizard and let me look at our, OD, our different ODT models. So ODT disabled on both slot one and slot two is this DQ342400 model. And then uh, the ODT1 enabled is this in ODT60. And then ODT2 is this in ODT80 on slot 2, but the same as disabled on slot 1. And that's because slot 2 is different because it's at the very end of the line. So what might be a good idea is to change slot 2 to uh, use its ODD, ODT2 setting. And... Uh, that's basically the setting we used for writes when uh, when we were writing to slot one. So uh, with that uh, slot two at the at the end of the line, uh, it's probably good to have an ODT two setting on it uh, since it's inactive to help uh, mitigate that that reflection problem. So let's go back in here and re-simulate to see what we get. And I'll go ahead and disable those previous waveforms. And look, now we have a nice clean eye. So uh, to make sure that we use that setting, let's go back and revalidate in the batch DDRX batch wizard. So we'll set our ODT behavior to have ODT2 enabled when reading from slot one. And similarly, uh, when reading from slot two, we'll have the ODT2 enabled on slot one there. Um, so we'll see if this generates uh, good results for us. And if we look at our simulation results now with those different ODT settings, we can see that we're now passing for all cases and we have nice clean eyes on the, especially on those reads from, from slot one there. And that is the DDR4 support in Hyperlinks 9.2.